Hello and welcome. In my last video, I introduced this instrument, which is a Besson 5-valve euphonium from the late 1890s. Now in that video, I said that I wasn't going to play it because it's got a whole bunch of air leaks. And so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about air leaks and how you, can, how you might be able to identify where they're coming from. In that video I said that this instrument sounds a little bit like a drain pipe and so I'm going to give you an example firstly of what that sounds like. <laughs> So not particularly brilliant, uh, it's not unusable but I would never play it out and I, would, I don't enjoy playing it because you just know that it's got a whole bunch of air leaks in it. So the next thing is to see where those air leaks are coming from and can we plug them up. On an old instrument the first thing that's going to come to mind is that the plating on the valves has worn off to such an extent that the air is escaping through the sides of the valve wall. The way that a valve is supposed to work is that these holes through the valve are supposed to line up with the ports and there is supposed to be such a small gap between the valve and the cylinder that the valve sits inside that no air can escape outside of these holes. When the plating on the valve however starts wearing down the gap increases between the wall of the valve and the cylinder and as a consequence of that the air can escape and it can leak out. Having a look at these valves yeah there's it's it's not a silver color there has been quite a lot of wear on these valves but the valve uh, the valve itself is not the only surface that can wear. The inside of the valve cylinder uh, and the valve housing can also wear. So you've got two surfaces that can wear and create, uh, create areas for air to leak out. In addition, these old instruments sometimes had a greater manufacturing tolerance and sometimes the valve block themselves not, are not necessarily perfectly cylindrical. All of those things can add up to uh, creating an air gap. The other thing that I notice in having a look at this instrument is that somebody has added little sleeves to the tuning slides to uh, lower the pitch. This instrument most likely was in high pitch and so people add often little sleeves around the bottom of the tuning slides to make the instrument play in a lower pitch. We can see that on this tuning slide, the third valve tuning slide, and also the first valve tuning slide on the other side. Another thing that I notice is that there is a crack in some of these sleeves that join the various sections of tubing together. So there's a lot of things that could be wrong uh, about that instrument other than the sort of things that you might look for on a modern instrument which include uh, the corks on the water keys not creating a good seal and so forth. So with a lot of things to look at, how might you go about it? And so the, one of the things that I use is to investigate the tubing of the instrument and find out the area closest to the bell that you can plug. This is usually a tuning slide of some description. And so you trace the branches of the tubing and you see where can I go, uh, where is the closest to the bell that I can get and shove my finger in or something else to block the air. And in this case, the example, um, the last thing that this tubing uh, connects to is the fifth valve. So if I push the fifth valve, the air is going to be routed through the fifth valve tuning slide, which is uh, just down here. I can block that up. And by blocking that up, when I blow air in through this, uh, through the mouthpiece, it's going to go through all of the valve block and the fifth valve and then go no further. So it gets most of the instrument. And so I take the fifth valve tuning slide out, I hold the fifth valve down, and I block up the, uh, the port where the fifth valve tuning slide goes, and I blow. In an ideal world, there should be a lot of resistance, and I shouldn't be able to blow very much at all. The reality is, is that I can blow with a reasonable amount of resistance, but I can quite easily blow air through this instrument, 
and I can hear air coming out of the instrument. So that tells me that the instrument is not airtight. I can diagnose a little bit further what might be happening. So the very first thing that the air goes through is the main tuning slide here. So I could take the main tuning slide out, block this port, and so see whether there is a leak in the lead pipe. Sometimes lead pipes deteriorate with sort of the gunk and the muck that people play in, and so if you've got red rot or some uh, cracking or concerns like that, then the lead pipe could be at fault. So I could block up this tube and give it a blow, and I can't blow any air out at all. That tells me that the lead pipe is fine. And so the next step that I might consider would be to go through and remove all of the tuning slides in turn and see where the air leaks occur. And so I've taken the first valve tuning slide out and we'll see if there's any leaks in the first valve tuning slide. This is going to get a bit of a, be a bit of a faff because of the sort of way that the human body's arms are attached, but let's see what happens. And what that tells me is that yeah, the first valve actually does leak. There is, there is, I can hear the air coming out. There is not nearly as much resistance as there was before. So I could continue this process and it would tell me where the leaks generally occur. But if I was wanting to fix these leaks, that doesn't tell me the whole story. It doesn't tell me where the air is actually going out. I could make a good guess, but it wouldn't tell me definitively. So the next step that I would take would be to submerge the instrument in a bath. The first step is to fill your bath up with water. The second step before you put your instrument in is to block up the port that you're going to be using. So in my case, I want to block up the fifth valve outlet because water is going to go through the bell, but I don't want water to be inside the rest of the tubing. I don't want to see where water comes out because I won't be able to see it. I want to see where air comes out. And so the key thing is to make sure that there is only air inside the bits of the instrument that you are testing. So block up the the, the fifth valve port in this particular case before you put the instrument in the bath. Now because of the obvious difficulties with doing that you can use a couple of aids. You can put a, a balloon over the end and just tie that in place to make sure that that will prevent water going through. You can put your finger, you can put a cork or something else that's reasonably airtight on the instrument. And so that is what I did. And so the next thing you'll see is a clip of me doing that. And I had my wife helping me. She was identifying where the leaks were coming out so that uh, because I just simply couldn't see whilst I had my face attached to the mouthpiece huddling over a bath. What I found by doing that is that there are substantial air leaks for this instrument. The first and second valves both had air coming out the hole in the bottom of the valve. Uh, and that hole is, and that tells me that air is leaking outside of the cylinder of the valve. I also saw that on the fourth valve as well. I saw uh, air coming out of the second and first valve tuning slides. Now that's quite worrying because I wasn't pressing the second and first valve down at all. So the fact that there was air enough to come out of the bottom of the valve, but also to escape into the valve tuning slide and come out um, some cracks in the bottom of the valve, uh, tells me that that first and second valve in particular had substantial air leaks in it. Um, so the first, second and fourth valves all had these problems. The first and second valve tuning slides had uh, cracks uh, that air was coming out as well. And so what that tells me is that this instrument would need substantial work in order to make it properly playable again. The next thing that sort of re-emphasized that to me is that when I took the instrument out of the bath, Despite the fact that I had plugged up um, the, the, the fifth valve port, there shouldn't have been any water in the instrument. The first, second, and third, and fourth tuning slides all had water in them. So water had leaked in through the instrument um, through gaps in around the valves, potentially through the outside of the tuning slides, or any other cracks that appeared in this instrument. So I'd need to send it away, have the valves replated, um, relapped into place and a whole bunch of substantial work that I just simply can't afford to do. 
So um, it's a bit of a sad story, but hopefully uh, the process that I've gone through to investigate and test where the issues on this instrument lay may be useful for some of you. Um, hopefully, if you follow this process, the leaks that you may find will be a lot easier to deal with than what I found. The best case scenario is that the only thing that leaks is the cork around your water key, because that's a really simple thing to fix yourself. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.